Hi everyone, welcome back to another Excel Academy YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at drainage patterns which falls under the fluvial geomorphology section under the IB geography syllabus. So there's many types of drainage patterns and it's important to note that the patterns of a river and its tributaries are determined mainly by the underlying rock type and or the relief of the area. Right? So let's firstly take a look at the dendritic pattern. So your dendritic pattern, some characteristics that are associated with the dendritic pattern is the fact that the pattern is tree-shaped, uh, your tributaries join at acute angles, we can see here that our tributaries join at acute angles, and distinct interfluves, so if we know our fluvial terminology, your interfluves are your area or is an area between your tributaries all right so distinct interflues are formed and so we can see here alongside us our topographic map example and this is a clear depiction of a dendritic pattern because as we spoke about here under our characteristics firstly our pattern is tree shaped all right it looks like a tree or the branches of a tree your tributaries join at acute angles, okay, and distinct, it's very important, distinct interflues are formed. Now, some underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with your dendritic pattern is the fact that your underlying rock types is uniformly resistant to erosion, and there's usually little variation in slope or gradient. Now, your trellis pattern some characteristics of your trellis pattern include the fact that its founding areas are fold mountains or where ridges run parallel to each other. And it's important for you to revise your grade 11 geomorphology for you to know what your fold mountains are or and as well as your ridges. All right. Now, the main river cuts through the ridges, forming gaps or ports. Again, terminology that's found in your grade 11 geomorphology section. All right, your tributaries join the main stream or the main river at right angles or at 90 degrees. And lastly, the main streams are parallel. Now, some underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with your trellis pattern include the fact that it's formed in areas with alternating hard and soft rock. The layers are inclined or folded, all right, and a strong mainstream cuts across the landscape, which creates, uh, in return, in which thus creates gaps or ports. Another drainage pattern that we can find is a rectangular drainage pattern. Now, some characteristics of your, uh, or well, we can see here in this image that an angular pattern develops along exposed joints. Now, it's very important to take note of the fact that it develops along exposed joints, and you'll get to this later why it's so important. Now, your surface water flows along these exposed joints, all right? And we can see here in the image as well that sharp angles are present in the river. We can see here that this is almost 90 degrees where this tributary joins the main stream, what appears to be the main stream. All right, now your underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with your rectangular drainage pattern is the fact that the underlying rock is well jointed and the reason why I said it's important is because we need to make the link. Um, we know that granite has exposed joints and we can see here that the underlying rock strata or relief is must be well jointed, an example of which is granite. All right, And the joints exposed at the surface erode easily. Now, your parallel pattern, we can see here in this image that the tributaries flow parallel to each other. 
and there's usually a few streams that all flow in the same direction. And you can see here that your streams in this image are flowing in this direction. All right. Now, we can also see here alongside us in the topographic map example, a clear parallel pattern in that your tributaries flow parallel to each other and usually a few streams all flow in the same direction. And we just have one point here underlying, uh, under our underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with our parallel pattern, which is that steep slopes are uniformly resistant to erosion. Now, let's take a look at our centripetal pattern. Now, this is quite unique in the sense that your streams flow towards Again, our streams flow towards a depression or lake, right? And water does not usually flow out of the lake. So what my teacher told me is that imagine the P here in centripetal. Just imagine it to be pull. So P for pull. The water in the lake or the depression pulls the water in your streams and your tributaries towards itself, uh, towards the lake, towards the depression. So remember P for pull and the water is being pulled towards the lake or the depression. All right, that's just a simple cheat code or a memory technique. Now your underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with your centripetal pattern is that drainage occurs into, into, important, again, let's go and read this again. Your drainage occurs into a depression or low-lying swampy area, all right? Again, we made mention of how it uh, pulls your lake or your depression, pulls the water towards itself. All right, and the relief of the area, as we spoke about at the beginning of this video, determines the pattern. Now, we know that coffeebus and teabus are famous uh, landforms in South Africa, and they're located in the Karoo, if I'm not mistaken. And we can see here that the stream pattern or the drainage pattern that's um, around coffee bus and around tear bus is typical of a radial pattern, right? Now, some characteristics of your radial pattern include the fact that the streams radiate outward from a central highland area, such as a hill, all right? And we can see here in this image alongside that the streams or the tribute, well, yeah, the streams look like the spokes of a wheel. So this pattern, it looks like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. All right. And your underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with the radial pattern include the fact that it's usually or typical of a dome or cone-shaped feature, such as a volcano, conical hill, pointed butte, or mesa. So we can see here Tiabus, I think it's a pointed butte if I'm not mistaken. All right, and we can see here that your drainage pattern is typical, uh, it's a typical radial pattern. And again, as we spoke about at the beginning of this video, it's important to note that the relief determines the pattern as well. Your drainage pattern. We can see here in this image and in the topographic map example of Sierkufle alongside that it's quite a haphazard pattern of drainage, all right? In the sense that there's many lakes, swamps or meander scars that occur and oxbow lakes may also form. So deranged, another word for it is haphazard, right? So we can say that it's a very haphazard pattern of drainage. All right. And your underlying rock strata or relief that's associated with your deranged pattern 
is the fact that it's found in areas which are usually geologically young. And what we mean by an area being geologically young is that the surface rocks are unconsolidated and the sediments have accumulated more recently. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video if you found it helpful and please subscribe to the channel.